People are like, who is Danielle Victor? And I'm like, bitch, it's Danny with two N's. Am I a fashion blogger? Maybe. Am I a storyteller? For sure. Am I a badass bitch? Absolutely. So if you're smart, you'll subscribe to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. It's Danny with two N's and don't ever call me Danielle. I don't know when I changed my name to Danny with two N's in kindergarten and I also always felt when people said Danielle it felt like I was getting in trouble so here I am. Here I am. <laughs> Welcome back to episode 5, bitch. School is in session. Today we are talking about the art of allowing. And y'all need to allow me to be makeup free because a bitch couldn't even try it. This entire week you couldn't bother me to put on- I didn't even color in my brows. This is as good as it was getting for this video. So y'all need to be in a state of allowing me to be me naturally. Okay, thanks. So today we are going to discuss the art of allowing, which says, I am that which I am, and I am willing to allow others to be that which they are, which basically means I am who I am, and that is good enough, and you are who you are, and while it might be different from that which I am, it is still good, and it's still enough. To be successful in the art of allowing, you need to fully understand the law of attraction and the law of creation. I have covered both of those things on my channel, which you can find under the playlist, Manifest manifestation and spirituality. Yeah, we're starting a playlist, girl. And boys, women and men. <laughs> we're gonna turn this channel into a positive vibration where I turn my subscribers that once watched me dissect horror and crime, now dissect the power of creation, money, manifestation, visualization, and creating the life of our dreams. And I don't care if each video gets one view or one million views, it's gonna reach who it needs it. I hope that everyone on my channel who misses the old content gives this content a try because your life could change. You just never know, okay? You're welcome. You're welcome. Gratitude is most important. Once you understand the laws, you understand that as a deliberate creator, you only focus on what you want. We do not focus on what we do not want. So even if we're around someone who has extreme differences than us, we are not affected by negative emotions because we only focus on what we do want. So let's say you're in a conversation with someone and it's getting heated because you guys have completely different views about the topic of the conversation. You focus on the aspects of this person that you do like or aspects of the conversation that you do want therefore your emotions aren't going to a lower vibration because you're focusing on the fact that this person is not saying what you want them to say they are not agreeing with you they are in complete and utter difference from you and then you're affected negatively because you want them to be basically you which is not a thing and not a vibe I have said many times in my videos that my truth doesn't have to be your truth it is not my job or anyone's job to get a mob of people to follow the truth that they believe is the truth. Imagine if we were all exactly the same, exactly the same, had the same exact thoughts, had the same exact opinions, wore the same exact clothes, did the same things. It would be like some Pleasantville weird shit and it like would not be enjoyable. I would honestly feel like I was in the Twilight Zone. Even when you watch movies like that, you're like, huh? You know? And then Nicole Kidman did a movie once where like, all the women were robots and like were tuned to do to do like happy-go-lucky shit for their husbands and stay at home and I'm like no no but imagine if we were all exactly the same I can't imagine it I literally can't imagine one single person I'm a twin and I can't imagine a single person on this planet being the same as another single person because I'm not even the same as my twin our differences make us unique and our individual uniqueness gives birth to diversity and creativity and just magic because to each individual uniqueness comes new diversity, new creativity, new imagination, which creates beautiful things in the world. There has only been one Thomas Jefferson. There has only been one Abraham Lincoln. There has only been one Martin Luther King Jr. There has only been one Albert Einstein. There's only been one Danielle Victor. <laughs> 
there ain't gonna be another one and there's never gonna be another you. Look for things that make you feel good. Fighting with a loved one or a friend, look for things in that person that you love. At a party you don't wanna be at, but you can't leave because the Uber is surcharging and to get home five minutes down the road is $111. Find something at the party that you do enjoy that you do like hopefully there's a dog or a pet at the party that you can kick it with but look for things in uncomfortable situations or uncomfortable conversations that make you feel good that you want to see that you want to hear and it'll make the art of allowing much 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 easier tear down your walls take off your protective armor and remember what i discussed in the law of attraction and the law of creation no one can come into your experience unless you invite them or attract them through your thought so we are all free to create the world as we want them to be, while as others are free to create their worlds as they want it to be. And whatever choices they are making should not and cannot affect you negatively. When people do not understand the law of attraction, they don't allow what other some other people are doing because they are fearing that that other person's unwanted experience will jump into their experience and then they become defensive. So they end up pushing against others who are just simply living out their experience, which is an unwanted experience which will attract more unwanted experiences which will attract more unwanted experiences which will attract more unwanted experiences because you weren't allowing that person to live out their experience because you thought their experience was going to affect your experience but now it is affecting your experience because you're thinking negatively about how they are living their experience and you think the way they're living their experience or living out their experience is negative and unwanted and so all these things that you're focusing on of being unwanted are now attracting to you like a magnet so you are now attracting unwanted experience after unwanted experience after unwanted experience because you weren't allowing someone to simply live out their own experience because it made you uncomfortable you have to be willing to allow others to do as they choose while fully understanding that what they do and what they say cannot and will not affect you in any way the laws that I have discussed on my channel are universal. They are everywhere. They are absolute whether you know they are or not, whether you believe they are or not. They exist whether you accept that they exist or not. And they influence each and every single one of our lives whether you know they do or not. Our thoughts are attractive, powerful magnets that are attracting to one another. Thoughts attract to themselves and you attract thoughts by giving your attention to them. Instead of being an active participant in other people's movies, be an observer and you will witness the laws at work, the universal laws at work. You will notice that people that talk most about prosperity have it. People who talk most about perfect health have it. Those who talk about sickness have it. Those who talk most about poverty have it. It is law. I read a quote in a book one time, and I do not know who said this quote, but it was a quote indeed. And it says, words do not teach. It is life experience that brings you knowing. And it's so true. Every lesson I've ever fucking learned has been from some life experience where I was like, ah, I get it. I understand now, universe. I understand now. <laughs> you know, I could sit up on this channel for like six, seven, eight years and give my thoughts and opinions and teach teach these lessons and bring y'all asses to school. But my words are not going to make profound changes in your life. They're only gonna spark something within your soul to do this work on your own. I've read countless books since I've moved home, which is so crazy because I think about my whole life and how I could have been like doing this work. I just, I don't know what I was doing. All this spare time I spent drinking or partying or, or, or crying or binge watching TVs or shows so far away from my soul and my own happiness, I could have been reading, but as I'm reading and these words are inspiring and they're teaching me lessons, I realize that the lessons that are being taught in these books and, and told on videos online by people that are spreading a message like I am, you will realize that it never really will make sense unless you reflect back on a certain life experience that relates back to what I'm talking about or what 
any influencer is talking about or author or writer or poet because they had a life experience that shook them to their soul's core and they understood. They understood these lessons. So words aren't going to give you the knowing that you need, but words can inspire you to reflect on your past life experience where you can relate to what is being said and therefore understand what is being said for your own life, your own journey, for your own experience, really. The art of allowing yourself to be who you truly are while allowing others to be who they truly are will give you the freedom that you have been searching for from any unwanted experience. It'll give you freedom from any experience that you do not want and freedom from any negative response to any experience that you do not approve of. Allowing doesn't mean tolerate because tolerating is a negative emotion and allowing is the absence of negative emotion. There can be no freedom if negative emotion exists. If you want to help someone in need, then look for problems for their solutions without feeling negative emotion. Feel positive emotion while searching for a solution to help them with their problem. Do not focus on their problem with negative emotion. Let's say someone that you love is sick. You cannot feel pity and sorrow for them because when you are talking to this person that you love about an experience that they're having that is not wanted and you are feeling negative emotion while talking to them about their unwanted experience, you are now a contributor to that negative experience. When you talk to others about what they do not want, you assist them in miscreating because you amplify the attraction of what is not wanted. Pity and sorrow will never uplift anyone. When you are paying attention to what you know someone does not want, it is impossible to uplift them. If you're sitting with someone and they keep saying, I am tired, I'm blah, my tummy hurts, my head hurts. You can join in this endless sea of complaints or you could lead by example. When you are declaring, I am perfect health, and you mean what you say because what you say is your truth, then you might stimulate their desire to also be perfect health. When you're around people who are complaining about bills or how expensive things are, you can also join in the complaining or you can lead by example, declaring, I am rich, I am blessed, I am wealthy, I have freedom. And you mean what you say because what you're saying is your truth. Then you might inspire or stimulate their desire to also be prosperous, rich, wealthy, have freedom, be blessed. When your thoughts that you are having feel good to you, then you are in the position to inspire other people around you just by having good thoughts. Because when you're having good thoughts, it's shown in your external. Because when you feel good, you are good. And everyone can tell you're good because there's no reason not to be good because you know you're good. And so while you're looking good and feeling good and being good, people are looking at you and being inspired to also be that good. But if your thoughts feel bad, then you are adding to negative creating. You are literally co-creating negativity. You will know that you are in a state of allowing when you are willing to allow another, even if they aren't allowing you, to be who they truly are. When you are able to be that which you truly are, truly authentic, even when others don't approve of what you are, but you can and you will remain authentic, you can and you will remain who you truly are without negative emotions toward other people's thoughts toward you. If you can be joyous with who you are as a human being, whether people say that's toxic positivity or what have you, if you can be in a joyous state of mind of who you truly are, then you are in the state of allowing and also an allower, when you can also allow people to be who they authentically are at all times. When you have mastered the discipline to only actively participate in the conversations or activities that bring you joy, then you are in a state of allowing. You are an allower. For anyone who is constantly complaining about someone's delight deliberate choice to be joyous, joyful, happy, or positive, does not understand universal laws, is not a deliberate creator, and is not in the state of allowing. Because they are affected negatively by others creating the experiences they have chosen to create. Someone who is an allower has learned the law of creation and has the discipline to not miscreate. An allower creates deliberately, intentionally, and joyfully. My whole life, I have struggled 
with thoughts such as this person is doing something I don't like, how can I get them to do something that I do like so I can be happy? But the key to freedom is not to get people to conform to the version of themselves you accept or to do things that you like, but rather to accept that everyone has the right to be do or have whatever they want in their reality which is not your reality through the power of your own thoughts you will attract onto you only that which is in harmony to your true authentic self so therefore you won't have to worry about somebody doing something you don't like because when your thoughts aren't focused on the fact that they're doing something you don't like you're gonna attract the things that you do like about that person and you will only have those in your existence because those are the thoughts that you focused on uh, the key for any of us in our desire to uplift the world, this world, because there's probably many worlds out there in the black holes and wormholes and blackness in the universe, um, is to make clear decisions about what we want to be at any point in time and be that. I want to be patient, so I'm gonna be patient. And I'm going to be motivational, inspiring, understanding, compassionate, loving, non-judgmental, kind, courageous, brave, fearless, and generous. And I can decide to be these things at any point in time, especially if I'm trying to live out my purpose while collectively helping uplift humanity in a positive way. I have explained in many, 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 many story times and videos that I have been affected in negative ways by those around me, especially family members. I have to constantly and I will continue to constantly remind myself that I need to be a deliberate creator. Even if that means chanting in my head over and over and over and over again, the art of allowing, the art of allowing, the art of allowing. We have to remember that they, meaning anyone other than us or anyone other than I, are that which they are, which are creators creating their own life experiences, attracting onto themselves while I am also a creator of my own experience attracting onto me. That is the art of allowing. You might think that someone is messing up your world, completely destroying it, messing it up, but they are just creating their own world. And to them, it might not be a world that's messed up because we all perceive things differently, including how we perceive ourselves. Doing reality TV, I've had so many conversations with cast members, producers, directors, story producers about this invisible competition that exists existed between cast members from season to season. During that period of time, it was almost like all of us had this mindset that there's limited abundance. There isn't enough to go around. There are limited spots, there's limited airtime, there's limited money, yada, 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 yada. Then people are feeling like they aren't worthy enough, not good enough, which results in meaningless competitions and insecurities. This universe that we're experiencing is abundant and there is no ending to that abundance. None, no ending. It's infinite, it's limitless, and the supply is immediate if you allow it to be. So if the universe is abundant and the supply is endless, then there's absolutely no need for any one of us on this planet to worry. But worrying is all we seem to do. Let everyone create and attract to them while you create and attract to you. What's meant for you is meant for you. What's meant for them is meant for them. It's all really so simple. Us humans just make it very, very difficult and complicated. Give your attention to yourself and the things you want while allowing others to give their attention to what they want. In society right now, a majority of people, most people want to control one another instead of allowing one another. Controlling one another is not possible. That's why so many people on this planet right now are awakening to government, school, and church propaganda and their attempts for millions of years to control the masses and confuse society. There's creating deliberately, which we should all be doing, and then there's creating by default. For example, you spent your entire weekend binge watching a series on Netflix. That is a decision that was made by default because there was no state of decision. You watch TV simply because it was there. Creating by default is giving thought to something without being deliberate about it. And since you're thinking about it, you're therefore attracting it whether you want it or not. Most people will binge watch, have a binge watch night or two on Netflix and completely regret that decision later because they didn't create deliberately knowing that in two days when I watch 17 hours of television, I'm not going to feel good. So I'm gonna deliberately choose to watch maybe one to two hours a day, if that. 
that is creating deliberately. However, if you're just watching because you're depressed or you're sad or you have no plans and there's nothing else to do or you don't know how to spend your time, you are creating that experience in your reality by default, not because you gave any deliberate thought to it. Every day, begin the day by making dominant intense. Things you declare you'll see, you'll hear, or you'll feel. And by the law of attraction, you will attract only the things that you want to attract per your dominant intents, per your declarations. And you will see only the things you want to see, and you will hear only the things you want to hear, and you will feel only the things you want to feel because you declared it. You made a dominant intent as soon as you woke up in the morning that nothing was more important than that you feel good. And therefore, by the law of attraction, nothing is more important than that you will feel good and you will attract onto you things that make you feel good. Thoughts we had previously affected our current present moment, just like the thoughts that we are having today are prepaving our future. And there is a point in time where we will move to that future place. And then we will live the results of the thoughts we are having today of the thoughts that we're thinking right now. Today, right now, in this moment, we are living thoughts we have had before. Whew, that's crazy to think about. It's like, damn, I was thinking this shit. <laughs> was I? Universe, was I thinking that this was gonna be my day today or? Oh, you're right, I did, I did think about that. So whatever we're thinking about today in this present moment is already pre-paving our future. So we have to be deliberate about the thoughts we're thinking. We have to be deliberate about how we're feeling because the better we feel, the better it gets. The better it gets, the better it gets, the better it gets, the better it gets. You are always thinking and you cannot disconnect the past, the present, and the future. They are all tied together as one and they are tied together as one with the continuum of thought. After what I went through, I made it a dominant intent to declare that I am always safe, I am always divinely protected, and that fear is an illusion. So my continuous thoughts on how I'm safe and how I'm divinely protected and how fear is an illusion has paved my future because today when I leave my house, I am no longer in fear. I know I'm safe. I know I'm divinely protected. And I know that no one can create my reality unless I let them. I have complete and utter control of my experience. So before my fear and the things that I was attracting into my experience was because my thoughts were dominated on fear, not being strong enough, not being tough enough, not having control, not feeling protected, not feeling safe. Now my thoughts are I'm completely safe. I am completely divinely protected. Fear is an illusion and I have complete and utter control of my reality. No one anywhere in this world, on this planet, in this universe can create my experience but me. So once I changed the focus of my thoughts, life got better and better and better and better and I felt safer and safer and safer and safer. Now I never have that feeling of fear, of being unsafe, of being unprotected. It doesn't exist because those thoughts don't exist to me. Until you understand how it is you get what you get in your experience, it's going to be challenging for you to be in a state of allowing. For instance, one might question, how can I allow all the injustices that's going on in the world, especially with the war that's being hyper-focused on every single social media platform and news media outlet right now in the world today? You allow it by recognizing that it's not part of your experience. And in most cases, truly is not your business. It is not your work. It is the creation, attraction, and experience of others. I want, I allow, therefore it is. I want, I intend, and I expect, period. This process of being a deliberate creator can be a bit of a selfish process because to manifest a life of your dreams, your dreams, you have to have a healthy view of self. The not allowing of your true self is usually where the not allowing of others comes into play. Usually the person who is the most disapproving of a quality of themselves will notice that quality in others and will disapprove of that quality in others too. If a person is accepting, approving, appreciating, and allowing themselves, all of themselves, to be who they truly are, then they are taking the first step of allowing others to do the same. That's why when people love themselves, it's easier to love others because you won't be judging them. You won't be focusing on the things they're doing that you disapprove of or that you don't like or that you don't want in your experience. You're too busy loving yourself that you only notice the aspects of others that you love 
love and therefore you're not nitpicking every aspect of an individual that makes you uncomfortable which essentially means you're just uncomfortable with yourself it's projection if there are others who see something in you that they do not like, which can easily be detected by their eyes, their body language, how they speak to you, then you might feel like you did something wrong or you might start feeling unworthy, you might not feel, you might start feeling like you're not good enough. All these negative th thoughts about yourself might come to the surface and might be bubbling up and like a uh, volcano ready to erupt. But it is not your lack, it is theirs. It is their inability to be an allower. That brings forth their negative emotions toward you and the same can be said if you feel negative emotion if you see something in others that you don't approve of it is not their lack it is yours for example on my Instagram or any of my social media pages there'll be like a hater coming through the woodwork every once in a while I don't get that much hate anymore but back in the day woo it used to be like real intense haters out there and now that I'm learning all this stuff I realize that what they're saying to me and how they're saying it has absolutely nothing to do with me what they say about me is their lack in themselves their hate for themselves they are not in a state of allowing because they're coming to a complete stranger's social media page and saying all these things that they do not like but they are attracting the things they do not like in their experience simply by being here and watching a video that they don't even really i guess want to be watching so it is not my lack it is theirs the hateful comments anything that's negative that is being thrown at me from anyone out there is a projection of their own lack. It has nothing to do with me. That's why it's so important to not take anything personally, especially comments from strangers online or people that you know. This was a tough pill for me to swallow, but no matter what the subject is, it is important to understand that there are no victims. There are only co-creators. So that was tough for me to like, acknowledge on this journey that I'm on but now that I've acknowledged it it's, it makes it easier to understand what I went through I guess if one talks about or focuses on something such as sexual assault or discrimination then it is very likely that they will be a victim of such experience what happened to me is an absolute example of the law of attraction which attracted onto me the essence of that which I gave thought to and I was given all my thought to crime, true crime at that. And then, boom, true crime was my experience. So when you focus on discrimination, got discriminated at Catch LA, got discriminated at Wally's, got discriminated at the courts. When I'm focusing on all these things, I felt victim to these things because that's what I was giving my thought to. I was attracting those experiences into my reality. So I'm not a victim per se, I'm actually a co-creator. I was not deliberate with my thoughts and I was miscreating. In our society, the more that is offered regarding any topic, like mass shootings or violence, which is shoved down people's throat through every media avenue possible, the greater public expectancy of that which they are being subjected to. So many people around the world, around the globe will co-create these scenarios by living in fear of leaving the house and being at the wrong place at the wrong time or going somewhere and being somewhere and then you're gonna be at that place where there's gonna be a mass shooter until you are at a place where there is a mass shooting because you co-created in that experience by focusing on the scenarios that you are being subjected to. So when you're giving your thought and your focus on what's being poured into you via the news, via podcast, whatever, you are giving focus to that, therefore you're co-creating these experiences until these experiences ultimately are your reality. It is co-creation whether people realize it or not. When you begin to fully understand the universal laws, the law of attraction, the law of creation, so that you are in the process of becoming a deliberate creator so that you can engage in the art of allowing. You will not be drawn to the television, the blog sites, the newspapers. Instead, you will be drawn by the law of attraction to the subject of your deliberate intent. A lot of people aren't manifesting because they don't know what they actually really want. And if one does not know what they truly want, then it's impossible to have a deliberate intent. And you have to have a deliberate intent on what it is you truly want in order 
order for the law of attraction to manifest in your reality. To wrap up this class on the art of allowing, it's really quite simple. When you are in a state of positive emotion and considering only what you are thinking, doing, and speaking, then you are in a state of allowing yourself to be who you truly are. When you are in a state of positive emotion regarding your view into another person's experience and you are allowing them to be them and you are allowing them to be who they truly are, knowing that what they do and what they say will not affect your experience and that they are creating their own reality, which is not your reality, then you understand the art of allowing and you are an allower. It's really, really, really not complicated. It's just a lot of work. Unless you can understand the universal laws, then the art of allowing is going to be very difficult. But if you can start to wrap your head around the law of attraction and the law of creation and how this universe works and how it's worked in your life already. Like if you sit down and you reflect on past experiences and how the law of attraction and the law of creation has worked out in your life, whether it was good or bad, then you will understand everything I've been saying in all these videos that I've been posting. And then you can use all of these universal laws to create the life of your dreams. And you you can be deliberate and at the same time of creating the life of your dreams you can allow yourself to finally be who you've always been while allowing others to be who they are no matter what they're doing and what they're saying because it has nothing to do with you unless of course you allow it to have something to do with you and then goes the story of miscreating so Hope you guys liked this class. My no makeup. Thank you for allowing me to be simply me today because you know, we have some of those days. I've been a sleepy girl. I am wide awake and full of energy and vitality. Boop. See that? That was me pivoting a thought immediately. Immediately. <laughs> anyway, give this video a thumbs up. Comment a, comment a stack of books if you made it to this. An emoji, the stack of books. Emoji, this is Dagobah. Comment that if you made that to the end of this video. Don't forget that all the links of mine are in the description box. You can shop my Poshmark closet. You can get a copy of my book, Dear John. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me. I'm thinking about maybe starting like a book club where we read like one book a month. I don't know. Maybe get more interactive. I have no idea. I'm just, I'm just going where the universe leads me. I think you all should do the same. I love you all so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And if you haven't figured out who you are yet, I know that you will. You've gotta, you gotta just like trust yourself. A lot of people don't trust themselves because a lot of people hate themselves because of how other people have dictated their lives, what they say, what they do, how they feel. Nothing out there should affect in here. It's you versus you. That's it. I love you. Bye.